We join the rest of the globe in recognizing World Intellectual Property Day. With the advent of the COVID-19 pandemic and most of our daily interactions moving online, the protection and full utilization of our work is becoming increasingly important. From geographic indicators to patents, copyright and trademark, your intellectual property is your right to access the full benefits of your creation. Find out how you can protect and use your creativity to your profit by visiting jipo.gov.jm. Your Jamaica Magazine program continues after this short break. The numbers keep climbing, and yet, some of you are still complaining about curfew times. Is that being selfish or are you being smart? You continue to blame the government, stating they are not doing enough. But the big question is, are you doing your part to help decrease the spread? The unfortunate reality is that far too many people refuse to take the coronavirus pandemic seriously until they or someone they love gets infected. Now, this is what we do not want, and I don't believe I can stress this enough. Wear your mask, sanitize. Of course, we love to hug and socialize, but just ease off some of that right now, not just for your safety, but also for others. It'd look hard for your relatives to be home doing all they need to in order not to catch the virus, and you out on the road being reckless and carrying it right home to them. Each one of us needs to help during this fight against COVID-19 as we work to make Jamaica the place of choice to live, work, raise families, and do business in a healthy environment. Good day, I'm Stephen McHugh and this is your JIS News for Monday, April 26, 2021. The Child Protection and Family Services Agency, CPFSA, will be conducting an audit of all children's homes and places of safety soon to identify the needs of these institutions. This was disclosed by Minister of State in the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information, Robert Morgan, during the CPFSA's virtual quarterly press briefing recently. We're going through the process of having the auditors go into the homes to look at how they're managing their finances, how they're taking care of their children in terms of nutrition, in terms of education, in terms of the environment the children live in, in terms of the human resource requirements of these homes. There are 52 child care facilities in total, nine of which are managed by the government. Mr. Morgan says the audit will be conducted within state-run and private facilities. This audit will be the platform on which we will base the new vision for the grading of homes an objective system where we can make a determination as to the type of intervention that is needed for a particular home. He says the CPFSA is also working closely with child care facilities to improve the regulatory framework of these institutions and have them fulfill 100% of their licensing requirement. In the meantime, government will soon be rolling out a program designed to ensure that no child under three years of age ends up in state care. State Minister of Education, Youth and Information, Robert Morgan, says the program will be called From Crib to Loving Arms. A child zero to three requires a significant amount of attention and care and love. And based on all the studies that have been done globally, a child care facility is not the best place for a baby. He says a proposal for the project has already been drafted and is far advanced. The plan has already been drafted and it is now on its way through the system to go to Cabinet to ensure that we have the support of the executive of the country to ensure that this is a long-term strategy to protect children zero to three from engaging with the children's home system. The Ministry of Health and Wellness is now carrying out COVID-19 vaccinations by appointment only until another expected shipment of 55,000 doses of vaccine arrives. Registration is open for persons 60 years and older, healthcare workers, and members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, Jamaica Defense Force, Jamaica Fire Brigade, the Passport Immigration and Citizenship Agency, and Jamaica Customs, and the Department of Correctional Services. Portfolio Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton says that until the arrival of the next vaccine shipment, the focus will remain on the most vulnerable. Once these vaccines are delivered, the Ministry will continue our vaccination program at the level one implementation stage. This is very important to explain 
What it means is that vaccination will be done at the local health centers in parishes. No blitz operations will or can be done until additional supplies are received, Madam Speaker, in May. The health minister is encouraging persons in the priority list to use the web portal at moh.gov.jm to make appointments or call 888-1LOVE. That's 888-663-5683. More than 135,000 Jamaicans have so far received the first dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. CEO of the Registrar General's Department, Charlton McFarlane, says the agency is now moving to link what it refers to as its vital events, which are individuals' birth, marriage and death certificates. Mr. McFarlane says that by the end of April, the RGD would have completed the first stage in this process of applying a unique identifier or civil registration number to all birth records in its database. And this is significant because we're talking about in over 140 years, right? Um, we were never able to, to do this. Um, so right now, unfortunately, um, the RGD cannot explicitly say that um, that this same person who, this birth certificate is linked to that death certificate over there, right? And, and that, of course, um, would have led to its own challenges in other sectors, such as in the pension sector. RGD CEO says once the first step is completed, the agency will then move to apply an individual's civil registration number to the marriage and death certificate database. Jamaica recently shipped approximately 4,710 kilograms of mangoes to the United Kingdom. The shipment, which included 320 boxes of Julie and 172 boxes of East Indian mangoes, is the second to the UK this month, following a seven-year absence from the market. The mangoes were exported by local fresh food producers Native Nature, Dusar Trading, Tropical Foods, Carita Jamaica Limited, and Wagwan Foods Jamaica Limited. Agriculture and Fisheries Minister Floyd Green, who was at the airport to witness the loading of the mangoes, commended the five local exporters. Today is a very, very big day for us here in Jamaica as we continue to target exports and to ensure that our fresh produce gets to the rest of the world. Jamaica had stopped shipping mangoes to the UK in 2014 based on a self-imposed ban due to fruit flies. But Minister Green says a lot of progress in quality control has been made since then. We do detailed inspections, random samples of every shipment to ensure that there are no fruit flies being sent abroad. And as you would have seen, the team works very, very hard, very, very detailed, and this is critical to ensure that we keep the markets open. And finally, Western Parks and Market WPM Waste Management Limited is urging residents of St. James to separate plastic containers from their regular household waste in order to reduce the high volume of plastics at the retirement landfill. WPM's Regional Operations Manager Garnett Edmondson made the plea during the recent monthly meeting of the St. James Municipal Corporation. He pointed out that plastics not only harmed the environment but intensified fires at the landfill. When they go to the landfill, and should, should there be a fire, those plastic enhance the burning and give us less control in managing any event of a spontaneous or otherwise fire at the landfill. The WPM's regional operations manager said the agency had ramped up its fight against plastic pollution but needed the public support in the process. The entity is undertaking activities during the year to encourage plastic separation, starting with the Our Love of the Environment initiative, which was held on February 14. Similar projects will be conducted on Labor Day in May and Solid Waste Day in June. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Stephen McHugh. Thanks for watching. Properly carry out a hand rub, apply a palmful of the product in your cupped hand, covering all surfaces. Rub your hands palm to palm. Rub your right palm over the back of your left hand with interlaced fingers and vice versa. Rub your hands palm to palm with fingers interlaced. Rub the back of your fingers to opposing palms with fingers interlocked. Rotationally rub backwards and forwards the clasped fingers of your right hand in your left palm and vice versa. Once your hands are dry, they are now safe.
As we close out the month of April, we've been experiencing pockets of rainfall. It may not be enough to cause flooding or damage to infrastructure, but it's just the right amount to create a welcoming habitat for mosquitoes. See how you can limit this Vector's breeding site next. Mosquitoes are undoubtedly annoying with their irritating sound and stinging bites. But there are more compelling reasons we'd rather not have them around. Several species are carriers of diseases and a threat to human health. Of most significance to Jamaica is the Aedes aegypti mosquito, known to transmit dengue fever, chikungunya, yellow fever, and the Zika virus. Only female mosquitoes bite, doing so to get the blood they need for egg production. And therefore, only female mosquitoes transmit these viruses. The Aedes aegypti mosquito is what we call a timid feeder. So she's easily disturbed when feeding. It means that in one night, she may feed on several persons before she takes her complete blood meal. Each time she feeds, she secretes that substance. And in the secretion of the substance, the pathogen is passed on. So in one night, one female Aedes aegypti mosquito is able to infect more than one person. The female Aedes aegypti mosquito is a prolific breeder. One female Aedes aegypti mosquito is able to lay up to 200 eggs each time she lays her eggs. So one mosquito can populate an entire area. The lifespan of the mosquito is around three weeks and the entire cycle from egg to adult can occur in as little as seven to eight days. Female mosquitoes are ready to mate within a few hours after reaching their adult stage and males are usually ready within 24 hours. This mosquito prefers cleaner waters for the female mosquitoes. She will lay her eggs in water and for the Aedes it would be water which is in and around the household. So while there are a number of things we can and should do to prevent being bitten, the most effective way to prevent the spread of diseases by these mosquitoes is to prevent their breeding. The Aedes aegypti mosquito is a mosquito that breeds in a containerized environment. They do not breed in rivers and drains, but they breed in containers that can be found in and around where persons dwell. So come with us and let us show you some of those breeding sites. This is a typical disc drainer that we find in most homes. And under most disc drainer is a tray that collects the water that comes off the dishes. And believe it or not, we have found breeding in several homes in these disc drainers. Yes. You can see that we have water that has settled. If this water does not evaporate quickly, it can lend itself to the breeding of the Aedes aegypti mosquito. So you not only have to empty the disc drainer, but you have to scrub to remove those eggs. This is the typical saucer that we will find under a plant. The rain has reached to fallen, it has collected water, and right now it is steaming with the Aedes aegypti mosquito. Do you have some of these in your home? Aedes aegypti prefers water that is a little bit on the cleaner side, and it's found in a shaded environment. So what should we do with something like this? It's quite simple. You need to throw away the water. And if these containers are not being used, you have to keep them turned down so they're not able to collect water. If you have them under your plants, we ask that you bore holes in them so that it will not collect water. Do you have these in your homes? We find these in a lot of hotels and business places. And we ask those persons, check these bird baths or any ornamental things like these you have in your garden to ensure that they are not breeding the Aedes aegypti mosquito. There are things like this thrown down in person's backyard. Old equipment, old furniture, old fixtures that are taken from homes, especially during construction. These are also able to hold water. And if they are holding water and sit for a while in the environment, they will also breed mosquitoes. And so we have found breeding in wheelbarrows, in old refrigerator, in old things such as this one. And we ask persons, if you are throwing out these, please ensure that they are positioned in such a way that they will not collect water. Many persons 
when they do have their drums, most times they have miss, they don't, it, drums do not have any covers. So there is a mesh cover which is so designed to replace the missing covers. It is lightweight and what we do is just simply slip it over and the mesh is so designed mosquitoes will not be able to go through this mesh to get to the water. So this is the ideal way. One of the benefits also of this mesh is that even when rain does fall, water will go right through it. This is a typical example where this we have is a plastic drum and we have a metal cover here which is not designed for this. Whilst in some practice the intent is good, there may be occasions in which it does not fit or sit properly and as a result you still have openings where mosquitoes can, can go right through and breathe. The mosquito is breeding right there in some very small places right around where you live. What is the habit we want you to develop? Once every week, search for and destroy the breeding sites of the Aedes aegypti mosquito. The Disabilities Act will protect the rights of all persons with disabilities. And here's a great teaching moment. Every person with a disability, like a deaf or hard of hearing child, for example, has the right to an education with accessible facilities and the support they need. In this case, it would be a teacher who can use the language of the deaf, which is sign language. Visit jcpdja.com. A message from the JCPD, an agency of the Ministry of Labor and Social Security. Managing the debilitating effects of climate change is everybody's business. Find out more next in this short video. Researchers say that climate change trends for the Caribbean include increased temperatures, rising sea levels, stronger and more frequent storms and hurricanes, and unpredictable rainfall patterns. In Jamaica, many older persons will tell you that there was a time when they could easily predict the rainy season and they would use that prediction to decide when to plant their crops. But this has changed. A warmer earth means an atmosphere with more energy and moisture. As in other parts of the world, these two factors result in more extreme Caribbean weather, such as floods, hurricanes, heat waves, and droughts. From 2013 to 2015, Jamaica underwent its worst drought in 50 years. Many people in the city didn't have water in their pipes. In rural areas, water in springs and streams dried up. Jamaica's eastern parishes got 90% less than their normal annual rainfall. Agricultural production fell by more than 30%. Losses due to crop failures and wildfires were estimated at $1 billion. Fast forward to 2017, and there were many incidents of flooding all over the country. The increased irregularity in rainfall that led to severe drought on one hand and extreme flooding on the other is a sign of a changing climate. Scientists have also documented a strong connection between the impacts of superstorms like hurricanes Sandy and Maria and the human-caused global warming. In Helsha, the fishing community can tell many stories of the sea now being in places where houses once stood. In Negril, the ocean is now much closer to the hotels than it was several years ago. So, climate change is real and it is changing how we live in Jamaica. In part three of this video, you will hear more about what we as Jamaicans can all do to help. I really hope that those who are listening to my voice will take an introspection of themselves and check out how they have been operating the motorcycle. Are you operating with an helmet, an elbow pad, a knee pad, a jacket, a shoulder pad, 
Are you wearing shoes instead of slippers? Have you removed the mirrors from the motorcycles? Obedience better than sacrifice to the right thing. Are you going to ensure that you buckle up in the motor vehicle? And the persons in the motor vehicle behind your back, your passengers, are they buckled up? Are you going to ensure that? Are you going to give yourself adequate time to reach your destiny so that you don't have to be in any ears, so that you don't help to clog up the health sector? Nobody should be going to the hospitals because of traffic crashes. Nobody. They are preventable, they are avoidable. We can make better choice than that. Names are important identifiers. They give identity, a sense of belonging, and at times, inclusion. Names may also be hurtful and serve as a means of exclusion. Find out how you should properly address persons in this particular community. Call me Nefeshiba. Call the person by their names if you know their names. And if you don't know their names, ask. I recall when I was growing up, um, disability was not a word. Um, most persons who had varying impairments, uh, people used to call them, even today, I'll, I'll use this one, they, they call persons with one hand or one foot one um, and they call persons who are deaf the D word, which I will not say. The Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities and the Disabilities Act push forward that you put the person first. So I know sometimes we love to say the disabled man. He is a man first and foremost. And so um, I know too that some members of the disability community, they don't mind. But if we want to be politically correct, just remember it's a person first. I know many of our, of our children and youths and even adults, they face labeling in their communities. And one of the derogatory terms that people would use to describe them is that you're, you are retired or you're retarded. And um, those are terms that, you know, emotionally, they hurt persons with intellectual disability because you are seeing the person with a condition and not the person. I am Hanake. They are also referred to as handicapped. Don't call me that. Don't call me that. But we all know that what we refer to as a handicap is a barrier that you place. It can be a physical barrier, it can be an attitudinal barrier that you place on the person. You know, but the person is not a handicap. Anybody with a disability is a person first. And so you address the person. Do you, um, the tall person? No. You would call the person by him or her, by his or her name. So address the persons by their names. You might say that, but the person is deaf, I can't, um, I can't sign. Ask them, maybe they can write, or maybe they can lip it, you know, and you figure it out together. Or if someone is in the space, um, they can maybe tell you. But ask, it's always nice to ask. And people who are blind are not necessarily deaf. So we, we do not need to shout and, you know, scream if, if it's a person who is, who is blind. They can hear and they can speak. It's a challenge, but um, for most persons will find um, the, the term visually impaired acceptable. People have um, many ways of um, referring to persons who are blind, um, uh, which, you know, we in the blind community will find um, quite derogatory, right? Um, there are terms that people use, you know, sometimes, you know, the T's or the other children, for example, um, you know, referring to them as bat or blind bat or blinky or cast eye or, you know, those, those, those terms obviously are, are, are not um, 
acceptable terms and are, are, are you know are not terms of endearment at all. I recently went to a function and um, the question was asked in the room. Uh, what do you think, what are the words that come to mind when you hear the word deaf? And everybody, you know, in the audience sought to say um, no hearing, discriminated against, and all those kinds of words. And the deaf person said, what about champion? What about an achiever? What about a motivator? What about those positive words that we refer to others in society as? People with disabilities are those two. And so um, if we begin there, no, you, you do not have to pay money to change an attitude. An attitude is a decision. And so if, if Jamaicans out of understanding that people with disabilities are people and they have capabilities, abilities like everybody else, then I think that will be a humongous achievement because it will then have a ripple effect on everything else that happens in society. We are just like you. We have the same needs, we do the same things. We, we work, we have families, we cook, we wash, we clean, we do all the same things. Um, we, are not, we are not different. Um, it means that when you're thinking of persons who are blind or visually impaired, um, you know, think of, think of us as, you know, um, your brother, your sister. The th same things that you need, the same things that you want. Respect the need for autonomy. It's, those are the same things that we want. I know um, a lot of persons might say, but, um, but that is what they are. And I would say, no, that is not what they are. The disability might be part of their person, but they are not their disability. The disability is a condition. And so um, all the other derogatory words that are utilized, if we put ourselves in the position, recognizing that disability is no respecter of persons, whether class or socioeconomic status, color disability has no bias and so in these days when we have those beautiful roads and we drive on them at high speeds and we can end up in accidents a disability is a second away That's all the time we have left here on this station. Be sure to join us tomorrow when we'll bring you another informative program. Missed aspects of today's show? Watch it in full online. There's our website and our YouTube channel. You may also want to catch up on the latest government information, such as curfew hours, gathering limit, and other COVID-19 containment measures on our social media pages. On behalf of the entire team here at the GIS, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Thanks for watching. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.